The platform with the second largest cryptocurrency in the world, Ethereum, was launched in July of 2015 by Vitalik Buterin. Now, the purpose of this platform was to provide developers with an open, distributed network where they could run their own dApps and smart contracts. Well, they allow the users not only to pay for the transactions, but also to launch smart contracts and dApps, as well as to store data on the blockchain. So let's go into some detail here, so that by the end of this video, you'll be happily in the know regarding what gas fees are, why they're so expensive, and how you can minimize them. My name is Bradley and this is Blockhouse. Let's get into it. So gas is a term for the amount of ether, the native cryptocurrency of Ethereum, required by the network for a user to interact with it. These fees are traditionally used to compensate Ethereum miners for the energy required to verify a transaction and for providing a layer of security to the Ethereum network by making it too expensive for malicious users to spam the network. Now, even though they're an effective means of incentivizing miners to keep verifying transactions and maintain network security, gas fees are nonetheless every user's most hated part about Ethereum. People hate gas fees not only for a general disdain towards fees, but also because they can be exceptionally expensive when the network is congested. So let's dive into what makes gas fees so expensive and also the simple steps you can take to save money when interacting with Ethereum's ecosystem. Now, Ethereum's transactions are effectively little programs, which instruct the Ethereum virtual machine to interpret them as actions to be done in the future. Ethereum's EVM and Bitcoin scripts are functionally comparable right now, but Bitcoin is more rigid than Ethereum. Ethereum's developers gave consistent values to its various operations. Each piece of work in Ethereum has a present gas value that is not affected by Ether's value. Now this gas value is constant because while Ether prices change, computational costs are fixed. Gas allows Ethereum developers to distinguish between the computational costs and real value of activities. This solution makes Ethereum and its network available independent of Ether's price. A smart contract's check the balance of an address function will always return 1,000 gas in the network. In order to accomplish this action on Ethereum's blockchain, a small commission in Ether must be paid. So to understand why gas prices are so high and how you might save money on them, you must first grasp how they're calculated. Because gas fees are normally significantly smaller than one ether, though it doesn't always seem that way, Ethereum uses a metric system of denominated units called Wei, where one ether is equivalent to one quintillion Wei. And by the way, a quintillion is a number followed by 18 zeros. The Giga Wei, or Gwei for short, or one billion way, is one of the most popular way denominations and is used to represent gas taxes. As a result, if you look at a gas tracker and find that the average gas for a transaction is 100 guay, you should expect to pay a base fee of 0.0000001 ether for a specific transaction. This is because the basic costs are only one component of the overall price structure. Following the new gas charge structures introduced by Ethereum's London update, which was a precursor to Ethereum 2.0, which brought some important changes to the platform, specifically in how mining is done and what kind of transaction fees are involved, the total fee can be computed as follows. Total fee equals gas unit times base charge plus tip. So let's break this down. Gas units, limits, this is the most money you're willing to pay on a transaction. While you may change how much gas your transaction will cost, you must do this with caution. This is due to the fact that different sorts of interactions with the Ethereum blockchain will take varying amounts of gas to complete. The base fee is the smallest amount of gas necessary to include a transaction on the Ethereum network. The amount of gas needed for a basic charge is determined by the demand for a transaction to be included, independent of its form. Base fees are dynamically modified depending on the amount of users interacting with the network at any one moment since they are a demand fact. Tips, also known as priority fees, are an extra amount paid to expedite the completion of a transaction. And this charge is sometimes known as a tip since it gives Ethereum miners an incentive to confirm your transaction before others. Now, when a miner confirms a transaction that includes a priority charge or a tip, they get that money as a tip, right? Miners would prioritize transactions that come with the biggest tips attached to make the most money since they can identify which transactions include tips. And here's the total fee structure once again. Total fee equals gas unit limits times base charge plus tip. What if I told you that in certain cases, total fee equals gas unit limits times base charge plus tip times zero? Well, knowing the basic rules of mathematics, it's not hard to calculate that in this case, you don't have to pay any fees while conducting a transaction. Remarkably, yeah. Does that mean that everything I was talking about only works in certain cases? 
Unequivocally, no. But in some cases, someone could pay the commission of your transaction for you. And I'm going to tell you a bit more about how this works later. It's crucial to remember that if you set your gas unit limit to less than the quantity of gas required to finish your interaction, your transaction will be cancelled, but you will not receive your gas money back. That's because the miner has already done the comparable amount of work that's needed to well, complete the transaction, and they get paid even if that transaction fails. As an example of the total fee formula, suppose I want to send you one Ether, and the average amount of gas required to transfer Ether on the Ethereum network is 23,000 Gwei. That would be my gas limit. The lowest amount of gas necessary to transmit a transaction at the time, base charge, is 150 Gwei. But I wanted to reach you as soon as possible, so I add a 20 Gwei tip to the transaction. In this situation, our total charge formula would be as follows. The total cost of sending you one Ether is 23,000 Gwei times 150 Gwei plus 20 Gwei. Following that, the total cost would be 3,910,000 Gwei, or 0.00391 Ether. This implies I'd contribute 1.00231 Ether to the Ethereum network, and you'd get one Ether to spend on nice JPEGs. Because Ether is more expensive, gas fees are higher. This is the first important reason for higher gas expenses, right? Simply because Ether is more expensive. And remember that gas fees are in Gwei, which is a different manner of representing an amount of Ether. The thriving decentralized finance and NFT industries, which continue to attract new users to Ethereum's ecosystem, are the primary drivers of this expanding demand. Now, here's something interesting. To encourage smart contracts to erase unnecessary storage, Ethereum provides a refund for each zeroed element. And that's where gas tokens come in, such as the Qi gas token offered by OneInch, which enables users to significantly reduce the amount they pay in gas, as the Qi gas token smart contract erases the storage that was filled during the minting procedure, thereby reducing the fees paid by the user. Companies such as OneInch are really leading the way here and are reducing one of the biggest pain points of the Ethereum network. But then, let's continue with understanding why they're so expensive. Now, gas fees can sometimes cost more because base fees cost more. Ethereum's total fee formula is dynamic, therefore gas fees are high. Basic fees are the minimum gas needed to include a transaction on the Ethereum blockchain and alter dependent on demand. On the Ethereum blockchain, approximately 3,000 dApps want their transactions to be included with those of the Ethereum network users. DApps have around 100,000 daily active users and 250,000 active daily transactions on Ethereum. And growing Ethereum use has increased base costs and also fluctuating gas for base fees. In an effort to try and make gas more consistent, Ethereum's EIP-1559 upgrade adjusted the calculation of base fees to be, well, determined by the transaction before it. And while the real impacts of EIP-1559 are debated, base fees continue to drive the total cost of gas fees up due to the increased demand for Ethereum. Ethereum 2.0 is a significant update to the Ethereum network that will see the Ethereum consensus migrate from proof of work to proof of stake. And among several benefits to the network, the update aims to put Ethereum rates in line with other market rivals by dramatically boosting transaction processing capacity and eliminating the need for miners. And while it's difficult to avoid paying for gas fees when utilizing the Ethereum blockchain, there are various methods you can use for lowering it. First of all, choose the right time and be patient. Unfortunately, you cannot directly lessen the impact of the gas unit. However, you may reduce your overall charge by cutting the basic fee and also the tip. You may choose to make your transaction when fewer people are using the blockchain to reduce your base gas fee. Base fees measure Ethereum's demand, right? Gas prices climb when more work is required to use Ethereum. More users require more network effort, right? If you can find a time when the Ethereum network is less busy, you can lower the transaction's basic fee to save on gas. Weekends are good for this. And also tip less to save on gas. Remember that we may actually give miners a tip for faster transaction speeds. And if your transaction isn't time sensitive, decreasing your tip may save gas. But also set a transaction maximum. Setting a maximum gas fee limit can save you money. Setting a maximum gas fee tells the Ethereum blockchain that X amount of Gwei is the most you'll pay. When the transaction is complete, the Ethereum network returns any unused maximum gas fee. 
And also setting limit fees may help you save money on gas and ensure you don't overspend on a transaction. A max fee, less than the entire gas required to complete your transaction, results in you losing your gas fee and having the transaction cancelled. Ethereum Gas is a vital component of the network that serves the purpose of rewarding players for their participation in the network's effort to keep the platform secure and operationally efficient. It is essential to have a solid understanding of its calculation and application concepts, and this specifically for people who want to learn more about decentralized finance and use blockchain technology in their day-to-day -day lives. Depending on the specifics of the transaction at hand, gas may be put into use either in the execution of the functionality of smart contracts or in the straightforward transfer of Ether or ERC20 tokens over the Ethereum network. Both of these use cases include the Ethereum network and as a result of the London upgrade, customers now have the opportunity to give tips that are significantly larger in order to facilitate the prioritizing of their transactions. The price of gas shifts constantly in response to the volume activity that is taking place on the network at any place in time. But how can you avoid paying gas or dramatically save on it? So, as of September last year, OneInch, the same project responsible for the Qi gas token that we spoke about earlier, began to compensate the users of its DEX aggregator for the gas fees that they were paying. And this came out of the fact that many users were actually quitting DeFi as a result of Ether's incredibly high gas fees. And this initiative became known as the OneInch Gas Refund Program, which enabled the platform to surpass $170 billion in total trading volume on Ethereum. The refund amount actually depends on how much of OneInch's native token is staked, and users who stake over 100,000 one inch are actually able to get 100% of their gas fees refunded. In other words, they don't have to pay gas fees at all. It turned out that this program was pretty successful due to the ease of staking the one inch token. It can actually be done via their mobile app in just a few clicks. So look, today we've aimed to cover three main points. Firstly, we've explained gas fees and answered the question of their existence. Secondly, we've explained why they're so expensive. And lastly, we've explored ways that you can minimize how much gas you pay, and even ways that you can avoid gas fees entirely. Now, if you think we've done all of that, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell notification so you always update when we upload a new video. My name is Bradley, and I'll see you in the next video.